This is Cult Film Face Off. Hello and welcome to episode 65 of Cult Film Face Off. My name is Chuck Roivers, with me as usual is Nick Leonard. That's some bad hat, Harry. This episode we're going to be looking at two much-loved, big-budget sword and sorcery epics from the 1980s, Krull from 1983 versus Willow from 1988. Incidentally, thank you very much to Ben Stroud uh, for this episode's suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> we will start off as usual with the first film to be released, which was Crow in 1983, directed by P.T.H. Krull? 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 Krull. Krull. Okay. Krull, 1983, directed by P.T.H. With a motley group of heroes in tow, Prince Colwyn from the planet Krull sets off to rescue his beloved Princess Lissa from the clutches of a fearsome beast, Krull. On a distant planet, a great kingdom was ravaged by beings who came from the future. Now, the only survivors follow a doubtful seer and a throneless king. They will hold her in the Black Fortress. You must have help. Columbia Pictures presents a world apart from anything you have seen before. Okay, Kroll, I knew what this was. Uh, I, I was well aware of it. I'd never seen it before last week or a couple of weeks ago. What about you? I'd never seen it. was very aware of it. Uh, the video cover. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. I've seen it I've it hundreds of times. was always interested, but it just wasn't my vibe. No, same here. Back it's, in the day. I mean, it still isn't. This is not no. my, kind of, my kind of thing. Uh, I borrowed a friend's DVD because he likes the film quite a bit. Um, and I looked at the back and I saw two hours and two minutes and I thought, oh Jesus Christ, this is going to be the worst experience of my life. This film is somehow completely overblown and half-baked at the same time. But when it started, I saw in the credits Stanford Sherman and I thought, why do I recognise that name? And I went on the IMDb and it's the writer of The Ice Pirates. And I was like, okay, that's a film I liked a hell of a lot more than I thought I was going to, so maybe we're in, be in the same turf here. Um, it opens very badly um, it opens with a great shit lookalike, though. Oh, I missed that. What was that? Straight off the bat. Go on. A few seconds, uh, the opening opening sequence. Um, strides into frame a purple-clad Russ Abbott. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it might have been Russ Abbott, right? <laughs> no. To be honest, this is a festival of shit lookalikes. I mean, I think British thespians... Um, all look like it's each a, other. It's a fest, fest, fest. It, but I, I saw a Liam Cullum, Liam Cunningham look-alike. Very, yeah. very uncanny look-alike. I saw about five Brian Cox look-alikes. Yeah. Uh, there was a Charles Dance in there somewhere. I was like, there's like five British actors and everyone else is just a shit look-alike version of them. But yeah, the opening, it opens with, you know, I'm... I have a complete aversion to Tolkien and there's this kind of faux Shakespearean faux Tolkien gibberish and I was like spare me please um, and then it, there's this shot of these alien soldiers sort of pumping their arms like in victory no enthusiasm just robotically pumping their arms and I just thought it's a bunch of extras the guy just said pump your arms like you're excited <laughs> pump your arms dears <laughs> yeah. and they all just sat, and it's, it's hilariously badly done and I, you know, I, it's, they're supposed to be celebrating but it's just a bunch of guys sort of punching the air um, I don't know whether to blame the director for that because I think that it's the second unit stuff that's also pretty dodgy later on um, but yeah despite my complete aversion to Tolkien and anything inspired by his work I am pretty certain I would have liked this as a kid because I kind of I kind of liked it now I didn't I really didn't mind this film at all <laughs> There's something that's quite endearing about this, and as it was kind of rambling on, I was just like, it's got so much ambition, and yeah. it's so lavish, yeah, yeah, totally. That it's hard not to kind of get swept up in it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I agree. Um, and the sets are done really well. I mean, that's like that is sets that have been worked on, and there's tons of them. Yeah, so it's, handcrafted sets goes a long way. It's it's really unusual visual design as well. I mean, a lot of the locations, I mean, particularly the coiled caves where the princess is being held, it kind of looks like a seashell or like an alien's mm. ear canal or something. It's like I reckon all fantasy movies should look like this, which mm. is kind of a dreamlike, very very dreamlike, nightmarish, unusual. So, what do you think of the cast? Any uh, standouts? Uh, okay, uh, well, I will, we have to talk about Ken Marshall because yeah. it's been a while since I saw a lead actor looking that awkward in a, in a leading role I mean he can't even play dead there's no, a scene no. where he has to play dead and I was like I'm not buying that sorry um, but there appears to be a pendulum in his head swinging between unbelievable overacting and understatement to the point of like I, I can imagine there's one actually I think there's two pivotal scenes where I can imagine the director saying "Does he? we're rolling mate this is a big, big scene you know we're going and he's just so there's no emotion I'm just like he's either one thing or the other um 
It's as if he doesn't know the cameras. He must have just point. got the part on, on Good Looks Alone. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I don't, he didn't really... I think he abandoned that. Not kind of, leading man material. No, t- um, for sure. But I thought Freddie Jones was brilliant as the Ben Kenobi guiding Colwyn. And also got the Gang of Thieves, led by Alan Armstrong, was really good. You got Bobby Coltrane as an angry plumber. That's right, yeah. yeah. And a very young Liam Neeson. That's right. Yeah, they were yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, I think a crush the ball is actually pretty solid. But I mean, Ken Marshall just doesn't really belong. I mean, it, it, it's it's unfair to say that because you're you're talking about some top tier talent, really, even at that age. But uh, yeah, he just looks awkward. Yeah. I mean, it does revel in its own whimsy. And, uh, oh, well, like Bernard Breslau as Cyclops? <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. I can watch a fucking spin off with yeah, Bernard Breslau totally. and Cyclops all day long. Yeah. Um, it's perfect casting, and he injects like complete pathos. Yeah, yeah. Like, right, I just want him to go, see. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's. I mean, it isn't obviously peppered with gags, and it doesn't seem like three quarters of the budget was spent on cocaine. But it, I did enjoy this to a similar way to the Ice Pirates, in that, yeah. You know, I mean, if you scan reviews written at the time, every the word that keeps coming up is incoherent, and boy, is it ever incoherent! It is an absolute mess. It's not a comedy, but it's kind of like a collection of sketches mm. um, that aren't going for laughs. There's and nothing really ties it. <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> not. Another, another, another set piece. Another yeah, set piece exactly. Another. Um, and periodically, it's straight confusing, um, but. It goes off on these weird tangents, and then it just goes back to being about a bunch of guys who were going to rescue a princess from a place called the Black Fortress. I was like, "This is fine. I don't. I, I really didn't feel the, its incoherence didn't really bother me at all." To be perfectly honest, although it is quite bloated, it's got that aimless quality that only big, expensive movies have. In that, like, for example, there's the spider scene. Yeah. That goes on forever. Yeah. It's not particularly dramatic, and it doesn't really have... It, they could chop it yeah, right out. <laughs> if that was in a film today, they'd say, OK, we're two hours, let's lose yeah, the spider yeah. bit. Yeah. Also, there's the scene of them rounding up horses, and it mm. goes on for ages, and you're like, this is unnecessary, just chop it out. It's so, so they're all begging for the cutting room floor, those bits. The effects are all over the shop. Like, completely, some of them are really, really good, and they're some really of them... They're really inconsistent. Yeah, some of them look like... I bet if you looked up a Doctor Who from that era, yeah. it would be about on a par. So it's some of it's, some of it's just unintentionally funny. But um, Tucker Jenkins, Tucker Jenkins, isn't that character from Grand Hill? Yeah, yeah, played by Todd Carty. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd who, who had the never-ending story of having AIDS for like twenty years <laughs> in, East, right. in EastEnders. Yeah. He is shit at horse rustling. Okay, I must for the video, have... one hour twenty-seven. Okay, one hour twenty-seven. Okay. <laughs> I'll look up. I mean, generally, the, the choreography of stuff like that, especially the action, is just bad. So, you know, I mentioned the bit at the beginning with the guys just yeah. pumping the air. Um, there's a scene in the opening action scene, somebody's stabbed with a sword, and they might as well have been jabbed with a fork. And it seems like the second unit director, who I assume was responsible, wasn't paying attention to everything. Because they, it, it, honestly, there's a big stabbing. It's just like, oh, it looks like, it looks like they're, doing, they're filming a rehearsal. So, some of that. Here's the thing I've, been, I've completely forgot to say. The whole thing builds to him getting this shuriken thing, mm. and you're like, right, yeah, because they, they they push that on the cover, they push it on the back exactly. cover, they push that thing's going to be amazing. And you're like, whoa, what's going to happen yeah. with it? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> jack shit. Oh, oh. That's the, that the biggest anti climax <laughs> in, the, in, in the history of cinema. I couldn't believe it. You just wouldn't mention it. No, or put, or leave it off the cover. <laughs> yeah, that's really quite rubbish. Um, the friend of mine who lent me the DVD is he a big fan? He's he's a I mean it's nostalgia primarily yeah. but he does like it but he said to me beware of the most frustrating scene in cinema history um, and I watched the film and I thought I don't know what he's talking about and he said you know before the end I was like I don't remember do you did this did this didn't stick out to you either no no me neither he said you know the scene where they're in that room with the spikes oh, yeah, 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 there's yeah. loads of gaps so they could have contorted themselves out of the way and not died and I was like that didn't bother me he's like how could you they could have just but there's no way they had to die so I completely need the scene he, 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 got so, he, he hates that scene so much he said he just fast forwards and I'm like I've seen so much of stuff like that in bad movies it didn't bother me yeah, yeah they could have just sort of laid flat or done right, something okay. to just not get killed but uh, yeah the score's good the score's worth mentioning James Horner. James Horner, Long yeah. Ping score, that's really good. That's, yeah. a, that's a plus. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it is long. I Wait, mean, make I mean, no bones about it. No it, question. It did feel long. I felt like I spent the whole afternoon watching it. Yeah, definitely. But I kind of got a bit swept up in it. Yeah, me too. I, I, mean, I can see why people, you know, watched it when they were, were kids, would, come, would buy it, would yeah. buy a fucking 4K restoration, would, would buy it again. Yeah, and, totally. Yeah, I mean, to my genuine surprise, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I yeah. mean, my expectations were damn low because this isn't my genre, and I'd heard from people over the years that this is just rubbish. Yeah, yeah a sort of Sunday afternoon yeah. 
perfect. I mean, I, I perfect. I can't believe I just said perfect, but I mean, I, I it's just bloated as a, mm-hmm. a, a, a an over the top roast dinner. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just you sit there and you just like, all right, <laughs> yeah. And it, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. But do you no. know what? It's just there's something it's appealing. very amiable. Yeah, it is. For want of a better word, I don't know. I just found it very amiable. Even though it's long, it's a bit bloated. I mean, the acting goes a long way. There's yeah. some great British actors on screen, yeah. um, and the sets were great. Yeah, the music's great. Yeah. You just get swept up in it. Yeah. Yeah, I you mean, can't hate on it. Exactly, I don't think you can. I mean, I'm surprised that so many people hate it as much as they do. But yeah, I was. I mean, I was. Every time it started to veer off track, it just got straight back to yeah. being a, a straight down the line sort of um, men on a mission movie. So yeah, I, I thought it was actually pr- pretty enjoyable. Yeah. Okay, you got anything else? No, that's it. Okay, all right. Well, in that case, let's move on to our second film, which is Willow from 1988, directed by Ron Howard. A young farmer named Willow Offgood is tasked with saving a newborn baby who is rumoured to be an heir to the throne from the murderous clutches of the sadistic Queen Bavmorda, Willow. From the creator of Star Wars. From the director of Cocoon. A world is awakening. Why, with the strength of my great army, can you not find one little child? It's a dangerous world. That's why we need your help. Your journey has just begun. Willow. Okay, so Willow from 1988. Have you seen this oh, one before? Many, many times yeah. from my childhood, yes. So well, I, when it first came out, I was really young when I saw it, and then it, it was on telly uh, at a certain point, loads growing yeah. up. Yeah. Did you see it at the cinema? No, it was in the cinema. Oh, I did. Is it cinema? Yeah, I saw it at the cinema, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, everything worked. Everything worked. I, I thought Val Kilmer was the absolute yeah. don. Yeah. I was completely in love with Joanne Wally yeah. completely, and I thought the comedy was really, really funny. Um, yeah. So it was, it was a like, complete win for me. Um, and How does it stand up? Pretty, I mean, pretty well. I mean, I watched this. I watched Kroll and Willow. Mm. Uh, I watched it this immediately after Kroll, and immediately, it's a better, more involving, more coherent, better directed, better written film. Like f- fucking immediately, it's a better film. Mm. It is nowhere near as interesting as Kroll, um, and it is great uh, aimed squarely at younger children. But in terms of old-fashioned craftsmanship, it's 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 definitely superior. But when I say old-fashioned craftsmanship, what I mean is it mili- militantly adheres to a formula, mm. um, and that formula relies on absurd coincidences I couldn't believe how many ridiculous coincidences I mean during, when they'd steal the baby and just drop it yeah. in front of me I was like yeah. cut, cut, I mean, make it, just do something more than this so it relies on um, yeah absurd coincidences but you know what I mean I think it's uh, I still really thoroughly entertain yeah I've, I, I, I agree um, I think in the comedy is there's some really still some really good comedy in there especially the brownies yeah I mean when he when they're really fucking falls, funny with their slash when, <laughs> yeah, but when he falls in love with that cat I was like yeah, yeah totally this is good <laughs> this is really good stuff um, also when when we first talked about doing this episode you said a quote to me and I just burst out laughing because it was the, it was the one quote that I think everybody remembers yeah. this <laughs> sure what it was yeah out of my way Peck <laughs> I don't know why Peck is so funny <laughs> just Peck as like I mean because it's a, it's meant to be a horrible slur <laughs> but the, just Peck you know just you, you picture peck, 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 peck. Yeah. I don't know why Peck is so <laughs> um, but yeah there's morphing overload I mean Christ it's morphing like morphing that special effect morphing oh of course animals yeah. morphing into other things That's into right, humans yeah. it's just so much morphing it was the, it was absolutely the peak thing. yeah it was, yeah. It was the peak of that time um, I mean there's not a lot that actually happens there's really not a lot there's a lot of incidents that, and there's just set piece after SF, you know just set piece after set piece but there's not a lot that actually it's very kind of straightforward and what he's yeah. doing there's yeah. no side plots there's no kind of you know it's kind of like Krull with all the rubbish removed it's very very it's much leaner than Krull yeah. so it's, and it's kind of it's the, it's, yeah, there, are, there is a lot of similarities there. I mean I did after watching this after Krull I really appreciated how much humour there was I really that that was like a for adults as well though it's quite I mean yeah. quite broad the gags yeah. it's not sort of kiddified no I totally agree yeah um, some great performances as well uh, I mean Jean Marsh as Bad Morda is the vicious evil girl yeah. really on point yeah I mean, she's, she's really horrible I really remember as a kid just thinking yeah, she's, she's the bitch. meanest yeah. meanest bitch of all time yeah um, and the the action scenes in comparison to Crawl are a, a different level. There's actually the carriage chase. Yeah, the carriage chase is fucking great. I thought it was worthy of a comparison yeah. with Spielberg yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, primarily because uh, it's this James Horner again, isn't yeah. it, doing the music? Um, that reminded me a bit of Indiana Jones, and there's that truck chase in Raiders of the Lost Ark. But like, I thought it was terrific. It's really that, well that, that, yeah, to cut. Really terrific that yeah. scene. That scene actually. Um, and Ron Howard is like Robert Zemeckis, though he's really good at selling sort of movie moments that some, some directors kind of undersell. I mean, even little bits like there's the bit where Val Kilmer 
dodges a punch and someone else gets hit by it. And yeah. I thought, they actually, they, they, Ron Howard clearly took the time to make sure that that looked like it might actually be a real thing that happened in front of you. Oh, they're just those little moments that some directors sort of think we can, you know, everybody knows this is just a bit of business and you don't have to actually make it look decent. Um, and I thought there's a lot of atmosphere that being in the village as well. When you first get introduced to all the, well, the pecs. Yeah. Pec- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some great extra pecs in the background. <laughs> There's a lot of gags to be mined from looking at what the extras are doing in those scenes. Well, because they're not, not great actors. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like the romance in it, but you know, he gets that dose of heartbreak potion or whatever it's mm. called, yeah, and then he sort of turns into this lovesick puppy, and then she starts to fall for him and then gets annoyed when it wears off, and he's too chicken to pretend that he doesn't hate her and all that stuff. It's just like, a bit more interesting than usual. Normally, those two would have a very, very standard relationship, but... That kind of made it more interesting. However, it's the most 80s thing of all time in that when they get together, she becomes pro- his property and a prop. She is probably the most interesting character in the film. And then when they get together, she becomes she's like... She's mute. She doesn't even have any lines of dialogue. Mm. When they're planning the attack at mm. the end, she's just kind of sat there making googly eyes at Val Kilmer. And she's literally a prop in the finale because those two witches are basically... She's, she gets thrown around while they're doing battle. And I was like, she was the most interesting character. I thought yeah, the battle yeah. was between her and her mum. Once Val Kilmer, Val Kilmer gets her, then she just becomes basically a prop. It's very, very weird. It's so 80s. Yeah. Val Kilmer's very good. He is very good. Very yeah. good. He is one of those people who was like persistently pretty great and then just went right off a cliff. Well, okay. <laughs> the stunt work's really strong as well. There's a couple of scenes, particularly uh, uh, Warwick Davis. There's one bit where a, a, a coach like speeds past him and he rolls out of the way of it. Mm. And it looks like if he'd have been a second later with mm. that, he would have got trampled. I mean, obviously, I'm sure he wasn't in any danger. But there are loads of bits where the, the people look like they're genuinely... It's good stunt work. Mm. Um, they should have found a way to end it after the siege at the castle mm. with the big dragon thing yeah. because the the actual finale is kind of a whole bunch it's of a nothing. Bit of a damp squib. Yeah, it doesn't. It, the, the first bit is way better. Yeah, I think it aged surprisingly well. It's definitely aged better than. Um, well, Kroll. Kroll, yeah. Because <coughs> that's it. That, I mean, but that kind of made it feel that that made it a little bit more charming. Whereas this was obviously the, the you know this is George Lucas at the height of his, well, not the height of his powers at all, yeah. but the effects are absolutely first rate and. Uh, yeah, I suppose that helps. The only the, the only annoyance of this film is that it's one of those film. It's one of those script. Well, it's not really the script. I suppose I just you know you can't really blame the script. But there's so much of people shouting people's names. Mm. Me gosh, Willow, Magnolia. Yeah, they keep shouting. I'm just like please. Shouting, just, you, just, you hear characters' names yelled throughout, and that just gets very irritating. It's a small thing, but I mean, it just bothered me. Okay, well I. Still, gonna, yeah, I, I haven't decided. Yeah. I, I didn't decide. Kroll is aiming at an older crowd, I think, slightly older. Um, and I'm much more likely to have a sort of animated conversation about it. Whereas this is just, you know, it's you, you can't deny how well made it is. And I, I just, I think Kroll's more interesting. But which one would I watch? I, to, you know, to, I'd rather watch Kroll again. But then again, I have, I've seen Will I've watched many the fuck t- out of Will So have I. I mean, I, I, it's been a while, so it didn't feel uh, stale to me watching it now. But I, yeah, I think I, but. Crawl's not the better film. No, but it's certainly more inventive in its look. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, there's a lot of things I like about Crawl as fucked up as and it is. Not, it just it sort of chucks everything at the fucking wall a bit. Yeah, Crawl as well. Seasonal well sticks. But yeah, you haven't got the nostalgia which Willow has, which you've got the, the attachment to Willow for the nostalgia. Yes, yeah, there's something. It, and it's got Val Kilmer, and he hasn't got that fucking tub of fucking vanilla ice cream. <laughs> yeah, right. Ken Marshall. Yeah. Um, yeah, in a way, this is like... This is basically a, a, a contest between high-end, top, top-of-the-line Hollywood and a rickety... British, ramshackle. <laughs> yeah, a ramshackle <laughs> attempt to try and make something... Um, I don't know if it was English money that funded it, but it's 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 the English through and through. It's very English, yeah, and it's kind of as fucked up as it as that, as that should be. So I, I mean, I I, I can't. I mean, I can't vote for Crow, even though Willow I. It's the better, Willow is the better film. Willow is but the better. Crow is way more interesting and enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, if you remember it on video shelves, video shop shelves from your youth, and you're thinking it was not shit. It always did look, and, I, and to be honest, I think friends of mine said it was rubbish, but I was surprised. I, maybe I'm I, just, I always avoided all those things, like Dark Crystal yeah, and yeah. I just avoided the fuck out of it yeah, just, the only one I used to watch like religiously as a kid well not religiously I just enjoyed the fuck out of it whenever it was on is Excalibur that's the only thing. Excalibur yeah, yeah that's a different that's a different cast though isn't it yeah uh, different gravy I was I, like I said I was surprised about how much I like Kroll but I mean the better film was Willow yeah okay some correspondence on Facebook uh, Jess Franco just Willow 
Um, Aldo Romazzo goes to Willow as well over Kroll. Yeah, you got him. Um, Andy Skates. Willow is a classic, but I so love Kroll. Burn, big Bernard Breslau is a Cyclops, oh, yeah. pure glass. Yeah, totally true. I, I mean, I can understand that totally. Paul Sutton. We know him well, the yeah. real cat lad. The real cat lad, yeah. I could watch Krull all day long. Yeah, it has the worst boss fight in the history of boss fights. Yeah, true. That. True. <laughs> but the rest of the film is fantasy gold. The supporting cast is just a roll call of British greats, and there are some great action set pieces. A classic good versus evil story with love, sacrifice, friendship, and Todd Carty. Loved it as a kid, and love it as an adult. Yeah. Just go make a cup of tea when he finds the dark one, and imagine your, in your head it was more epic. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. That's, that makes me. That makes me because I did genuinely enjoy. Enjoy crawl. I mean, on that. When you think about it like that, it's just like that. Some of the pieces are so yeah appealing. That, that, that boss fight is fucking. It's t- <laughs> Yeah. Talking about anticlimactic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Willow is a great movie too, and probably the one someone who was new to them both would prefer as it's dated less. Yes, yeah, Apart true. from the two headed bridge monster that looks a bit naff. Yeah. Warwick Davis is a lady. Warwick Derek. Willow. Warwick Davis is a legend and carries the film. He does. I mean, yeah, yeah, he does. He's very enigmatic. Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, that's it. I mean, I, 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 I do feel like sticking up for Kroll, but uh, Willow it is. Willow is the winner. Uh, thank you very much for listening. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, check out our social media accounts and all that stuff. Our videos are on YouTube, blah de blah blah uh, We'll see you again. Take it easy. Trouble. Goodbye. <laughs>